Hello, everyone in the LAS. We are here for the first time this season with the LAS Lock and Podcast. I am joined here by Tempest KTL and myself, Shore2, and our special guest of the day, Rat from Espionage. So, hey how's everyone doing? I'm doing pretty well. Happy to be here. Happy to be talking to you guys. I know we've had some separate conversations individually, but I'm uh, super happy to be here, especially talking to Rat. I've talked to Shore in the past a lot, but definitely nice to hear from Rat. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me, guys, first of all. It's good to be here. I'm excited to talk about all the uh, stuff that's happened. Oh, uh, we got we got three weeks of uh, gameplay to get up to, so let's uh, let's start with the standings here. Yeah, let me let's switch on over to the standings. We just did finish Heat Four, so we have quite a lot to uh, keep and keep up with. Yeah, so obviously I think Rat's more of the expert here. So Rat, what what are your like what happened the first, you know, three heats? Like what have we got so far? Yeah, so um the first couple of heats have been a little rough with a lot of the teams not being able to make games. There's a lot of FFs, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, as well as the whole smurfing situation from University of the N, which oh, yeah. yeah, that was that was something. <laughs> I'll I'll tell you that. Definitely not what I expected coming into the season, but for me personally, I was I'm a little surprised by the standings because obviously, like I haven't had a chance to play against a lot of the teams in Masters. Like I was telling you before, Rat, we scrimmed against Direwolves a couple times, and then we played against yeah. Espionage actually in the uh, preseason finals. So this is the only two teams we've been able to see. So I thought, especially Espionage, would like kind of just dominate. But obviously, mm. like I said, it's been uh, up and down season for everyone overall because of the FFs and the new team being thrown in as well midway through the split. So it's been an interesting thought. But what have you thought about like power rank, like power levels for everyone in total? Yeah. So um, initially, when the when the season started, I think Direwolves felt really strong. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what's going on with them right now, but it seemed like last week that a lot of their roster wasn't playing, and it it felt like a completely different team to me mm-hmm. uh as far as the other two though super friends and bpg sapphire they actually really surprised me uh i i didn't expect them to play as well as they did in our games yeah um i think they had a really a, a lot of good talented players around them and they executed their draft really well in our games that's great. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up your power rankings now for Masters. Obviously, we just saw the current standings. So we'll go over to what you think right now are the top teams in the Masters division. Tell me why. Yeah, so uh, I had Direwolves up there when I made my power rankings before mm-hmm. the last games that we played. Yeah. And I do think that they're still there with their full roster um, when they're playing at max capacity. Uh, we've we've historically had problems against them, and uh, they're a really tough team to beat, which is why I think they're topping out there. Um, the reason I have ourselves above the other two is I feel like we haven't really had the time to play them and actually show our full potential. Yeah. Uh, we kind of got, um, like, the wool pulled over our eyes a bit in draft, and they pulled out a few things we didn't expect, which ended up biting us. Mm-hmm. But I think given some more games that we can really show that we're the better team here above them. Now, I was curious on your thoughts on Apple Bottom Boys, too, because I, I do know you said it before that you just like you kind of just solved their identity. So I was curious as to is that the reason why you decided to put them as the fifth seed? Yeah, so uh, I think, first of all, I think they are a really decent team given they get what they want in the game. Mm-hmm. But uh, there is a few holes in the, in their normal game plan that we figured out, and it's pretty easy to exploit. Uh, namely, I'd say they do a lot of the same plays every game, so mm-hmm. it becomes really predictable. Interesting. Makes sense. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, oops, sorry. Uh, I sorry, think no. my, my kind of viewpoint on ABB is, like, I feel like this division is very chaotic. Yes. And like you said, like with the FFs. So I think they're just capitalizing on this chaos right now and they're giving themselves this like good opportunity. I feel like some players I feel like Bubble is kind of uh historically he's had like I I, I don't know, I, I speak from him as a friend, uh, but he's like kind of like a coin flippy in my opinion, but this season I think he's kind of 
on some consistency with his team. Obviously, yeah. they have different support. But like I said, I think they're capitalizing on some chaos right now, and that's good. I think Super Friends is another team. I kind of feel like the same thing, though. Like, there's a lot of this chaos going on. Yeah, I definitely would agree. So going into the final week, actually, for you guys coming up this uh, Sunday, Rat, what do you think, like, your final projected standings would be for the Masters division? So if the teams are playing at the same level they played in recent games, I could see us taking the division. Mm -hmm. Um, If not, we're probably going to be in a battle with Dyrrells over it. Super Friends definitely could make a run because that team definitely surprised me with the level of players they had. Uh, so I think I think ultimately it's going to be us in first, Dyrrell second, Super Wolves, or Super Friends third. Interesting. So it's actually curious. I, I I talked to you about I got I talked to you guys about this uh, earlier yesterday, where like the way the current standings are, which I'll pull up once again for everyone to see at home, is that I it's interesting because Super Friends plays Dire Wolves as their first game at eight thirty next heat on Sunday, and Super Friends already had beaten Dire Wolves with their full roster. So I mean, if I personally would give the edge to Super Friends again to beat Dire Wolves, which then would put Dire Wolves at uh, five and four, the same record now as Dire Wolves, and Apple Bottom Boys probably beats BPG, so Apple Bottom Boys goes to seven and two, and then you guys at Espionage actually play Apple Bottom Boys essentially for the division, because the mm-hmm. other two teams would have four losses at minimum, and then you guys would have three, and Bottom Boys would have two. So I'm really curious about that second game, which I wish we could be casting, but we're not going to be able to. But I, I'm really, really curious because that, that game is essentially, if everything goes according to plan, for the division. Because you guys have the free win going into the 930 game, thanks to the you know the, the whole scandal with DN. But um, you know I'm really, really curious and about uh, if what you guys are saying about their tendencies, if it comes true again for this week for Apple Bottom Boys, if they have something something prepped for you guys. I'm really curious, and that's why, I like, I'm going to draw the line. Like, I really, so, like, I, again, have only played against Espionage in the uh, season so far, so I'm going to give the, the, the one leg up to Espionage because of that, because I just think they played very well again with us, and I think between Empire, these are the only two teams that we've had competition with this season, so I think it's probably going to be Espionage 1, Bottom Boys 2, then it would make Super Friends at three and Dire was at four, which would be a very entertaining playoff bracket. To, let's just say that. What do you think, Stro? No, I mean I definitely agree. Uh, historically, historically this division has been ran by Espionage and Dire Wolves. Yeah. Um, I feel like this season, due to Dire Wolves kind of shaky rosters these past few weeks, I definitely do think it it'll be. Um, I do think Espionage takes the nod against ABB. I think they've really turned it around, but I still think them getting second seed is great. But Espionage, I think it's Espionage, ABB, Super Friends, Dire Wolves. And, I mean, I can see some fluctuation, because I I do, once we get to our power rankings, I do have ABB higher. Mm -hmm. But I have, I I trust in the consistency of Espionage from historic LAS outlook. Yeah, I'm the same way. I have, as of right now, the current, like, which we'll go into after we get into Legends, the current power rankings for the league in general. I had Apple Bottom Boys higher than SPRs right now, just because they've been more consistent the last couple weeks in the LAS. They've also have had some good games against teams like Dire Wolves, who previously I had really, really high in the uh, power rankings. Like, I think it was literally, like, (laughs) us at one, and then it was Dire Wolves at two. So, I mean, obviously they played this last week with two subs, so it's always going to hurt their case um, when they pick up two losses because they're using three subs, I think it was. But um, I do think they are a uh, good team, and I think Espionage is going to show us this week that they can rise to the top and win that, win that division. Yeah, I definitely think if they, if they show up, um, I think Espionage will definitely overtake... Uh... If I'd be a betting man, I'm willing to put it down money that Espionage takes it off ABB. Yeah. Anything uh anything anything you wanna any bantering like that you wanna share with us, Rant? You know, going into the <laughs> going into the game, you know, get some get some rivalries going. I mean, obviously you guys have known each other for a long time, right? Like you guys have been both been in the league for a while now. So any any, any thoughts going into your games on Sunday? Yeah, um 
Who do we got this Sunday? It's uh You guys you guys me. just got Apple Bottom because you guys had the end, but obviously that game is an instant forfeit due to the uh ruling that we had on them. So you guys only play uh Apple Bottom Boys this week. Uh yeah. I, I hope you guys uh bring something different because if not, uh we're gonna smoke you. I love it. I love it. All right, and so that that's everything we have for the Masters Division. I think all three of us gave a pretty good roundabout uh, answers to how we think it's going to play out. Now we'll go into Legends. I think it's less settled than that of Masters right now. I think Masters is... I think everyone can pretty much solidify a top four. This is where I have the hardest time pinning teams is Legends, honestly, because I, I feel like the other two divisions are pretty much set. Like, I think the top four teams are going to be the top four teams in both Masters and in Conquerors. But in Legends, I really don't know who's coming after top two. So let, let's get into it. Obviously, Stro, me and you both play in Legends. I want to hear your thoughts about Legends, what you've experienced so far this season going from the first four weeks. Yeah, so obviously, I think your team, Tempest, is kind of just taking a firm grip of the, this division. I don't think it, it's relatively close. Um, I think my team, we started off really shaky, like really shaky. Uh, and then honestly, I thought we were going to be in a pretty rough spot, but it, there's just a lot of fluctuation with those yes. three, four, five. And you can even argue into six with B team now, with the B team roster changes. It feels like almost any one of those guys can push up for top four. And you, I kind of really don't know who's going to take it. It's I've seen like Reaper just lost to B team last week. So yeah. it's it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's definitely a very hard division and I I even think that the four teams that make playoffs might not even be the four teams that make grand tournament. I think that fourth seed is that shaky where it feels like at a certain at any certain game the fourth seed can lose to that fifth seed or the sixth or the one of the bottom, the other two bottom teams can make a run through that gauntlet and make it to the grand tournament. So it's really interesting. I'm really curious to see these next two weeks. Obviously this week is a super week. So it's three games this week. We're going to know a lot more about our division after this super week for a lot of the teams. So it's going to be very interesting. I know I personally have three games this week. I've had a really hard time pinning down the, the power level of teams after Tempest and Empire. I think, obviously, I think we're the best team. We haven't lost a game. And um, I think the only teams that have really had, like, we've had close battles with is Empire and Espionage. Um, obviously, we know that Espionage is in Masters. But I think every other team, we've been relatively pretty sound. I think Cat Cowboys, we just had a pretty bad um, early game against them. But that's why we were able to just eventually just outscale them. Um but I, I I personally would favor Cat Cowboys as like the third best team in this division just because of my relative strength I've had against them. But it's hard because it's like, I feels like all the teams have really just beaten the lower teams. I mean, we talked about Verge didn't get a, oh, their first win until Heat 3. B team didn't get their first win until Heat 3. And then they just got another one here in Heat 4 with another jungle sub. So it's interesting. I know Verge and B team have been mixing up the roster to try and find better results whether it's for this year or getting ready for next year for next LAS season it's really interesting Obo and Cat Cowboys have pretty much always had the same roster same with Reaper but I feel like Reaper Owo, and Cat have been super inconsistent they beat the teams below them but they can't compete with the teams above them so I'm really interested to see what those three specifically those three teams will do this season yeah I mean I like another just crazy thing is like you guys had more struggle with cat cowboys i wouldn't say like a huge struggle yeah then like with tg we had more of our struggle with owo and it's kind of like it's hard to evaluate because like against cat cowboys i think we've had pretty sound games mm -hmm. um reaper we have pretty sound games against but like Oo is one giving us competition, but then I see Oo just like losing to other teams randomly. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, I will crazy. say when we played Oo, they had a jungle sub, which obviously makes a big deal. They currently yeah. have a, I think he's Diamond Four right now in solo queue, for yeah, as their good. as their jungle main. So I mean he's good, and obviously we didn't play him when he was with Oo. Hopefully we're gonna be playing against him this week because we do play Oo this week. So I'm hoping for a competitive game because, again, I, although I want to win, I want games to be competitive because it gives me a better idea of relative strength of teams. And obviously I want the best four teams making it out of our division because I'm going to have pride for my division. So um, I'm very curious to see how they play. I think we play OO, B team, and Cat Cowboys this week. Or no, I think we play Reaper. 
Let me pull it up real quick. I think I, I thought you had a buy. I think you have buy. No, we had a buy last week. We only oh. had, we only played one game last week. So we play this week. I already did scouting for it. We play. Oh, I was wrong. It was we don't play. Oh well, we play B team, Reaper, and then Cat Cowboys. So we play Oh well and you guys next week. And I think we play against. We do. I think we do B team Warriors, then uh, Reaper. Gotcha. So. Yeah, I mean it's we get to see the second rotation of B team with the roster changes, see what they, what kind of improvements they've made since the last time. We struggled last time, but that was still early heat. Yeah, I, I definitely think like Heat team. Week One was pretty uh, rough for most teams, so it's not super surprising. Yeah, it. But overall, like yeah, like you said, this is a very fluctuating uh, up and down. Some teams, I feel like Cat Cowboys has a like they really have to step up. I think they play against OO. Uh, first game, I think. Let's so. see. They play Heat 5. They actually do. Yeah, they play Cat Cowboys plays Obo, then they play Verge, and then they play us. Yeah, so they they really need to at least take the 2 1. Yeah. Obviously, if they somehow manage to take one off you, that's going to be huge for standings. <laughs> yeah, of course. But, but overall, like, like, there's just this week, I think, is where we're going to get that separation. Like, I think, I mean, I. If everything goes as planned, I expect there to be a pretty large gap between, like, there's a two-game gap between one and two, and then whatever gap we're able to pull off. Yeah. In the last week. I'm pretty confident that after this week, there's gonna be at least two teams locked in. We're gonna have to see now if that middle crop can lock in, if somebody can have a good week, and possibly go 3-0 or 2-1 and try and uh, solidify their playoff spot. I'm, I'm curious, Rad. Obviously, you're from the outside looking in. You don't play against, or you haven't played against a lot of the Legends teams. What are your thoughts of Legends overall as you see this super fluctuating standings pretty constantly, actually? Yeah, so playing against you guys, I, I, I'm not surprised you're 7-0. You guys, <laughs> yeah, you guys were really good at drafting and in-game you knew what you were doing. And I played against a lot of the Team Empire guys in the past, and it's no surprise you guys are second either because you guys have a lot of talent on that team. Um. I will say over at Espionage, we're big Cat Cowboys fans. We played them in the preseason. They're good dudes, and uh, yeah, they I had a lot of a lot of promise on that team. Yeah, I definitely feel the same way. They're very nice, and they're uh, funny, and I definitely think they're pretty good at League 2. So that's why I, I, I give, right now, if I had to give, like, obviously we're going to go now into uh, me and Stro's power rankings for all of Tier 1, actually. But I... I if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure I gave Cat Cowboys a pretty high nod, even though they're three and four right now, just because I do think they can uh, fix up a lot of mistakes. I do think they're a super bot light, bot side focus like team. They pretty much only play through their bot lane, which makes sense. I mean, he, there is their diamond exception down there in the bot lane, but it's just whether or not how teams can handle that and if they can uh, neutralize it. Like we just did a pretty good job in neutralizing them. Like even though we like our strongest side of the map is in the mid jungle, like our, my my bot lane with me and my support, we were just pretty much able to just neutralize them, so they weren't able to get like this giga lead that they need to carry with their team. Say so I feel like it's pretty similar with Owo, where like they're playing for their AD carry a lot, at least in the games that I've seen uh, against us. It didn't feel that way, but I was curious, Stro, what you think about like what do you think like each team's like relative strength is like where do you think they like really want to hammer it down and that's this is their win con. I genuinely believe with Reaper, Obo, and Cat Cowboys, they all play bot side. Yeah. I I, I genuinely feel like it, in this like in this division, I feel like there's a lot of bot side focused teams. Um, I think the only teams that I look at and say like jungle mid are the strongest is probably you guys and us. Yeah. Um, there there's just we have a lot of jungle mid priority and kind of like how we do stuff. But it feels like everyone else kind of just plays towards that bot side. I yeah. don't see many teams doing much else. No, yeah, it's just interesting. Obviously, seeing you know the top two teams having this mid-jungle style focus, maybe these other teams can start to incorporate some of that into their games. But anyway, we'll move on to our overall uh, power ranking straw. I'll bring up yours first. Go ahead and tell me your thoughts going into it, what you thought, and uh, led you to this uh, decision. Um, so I guess I'll go bottom to the top. Um, Warriors, uh, I mean, they just, they've been pretty inconsistent this season. Uh, they have potential. Let's see how they manage that potential. B team, I think with the roster changes, they're up. I, I think they're on the up. I don't think they're actually 11th. I feel like they can step it up. 
Um, I believe that's is that Cat Cowboys. Yeah, at Cat 10? Cowboys at ten. Yeah. Yeah. So I have them a bit low. Um, <laughs> I think that they're better than ten. They can definitely step it up. Uh, Reaper. Once again, they took an L to B team. That that really hurt them last week. I feel like yeah, if definitely they were able to get that that two O that would have pushed them up a little bit. Sapphire, I, I feel like with Sapphire, it's so it's again this is the master division debacle of we got FF galore early. Um, they looked in the games that I've seen, they look coin flippy. So coin flippy might have you a little bit lower. Um. I have O higher probably than you do because Oboe's given us more of a push than mm-hmm. Cat Cowboys has. And it's kind of it feels like they're pretty good at just naturally countering our style. So mm-hmm. kind of feels really weird. Yeah. Uh, dire, dire Wolves, I, I had to knock them down from last week. Um, I know they're subs. They've had back-to-back weeks of subs. Uh, <clears throat> I definitely thought that one and two in that division would be Dire Wolves Espionage. I don't know the order. Every season, it seems like it fluctuates with those two. Yeah. Um, got espionage up at four, I believe. Five, five, five. five. Yeah. So at five, yeah, I got espionage. Um, <clears throat> I think they're just consistent. They're like, whenever I think of like espionage, it's like these just consistent top two, top three in their division all the time. So, once again, they can solidify first this week if they battle it up properly. I got super friends. I think after like once they actually got a roster. In the league, I think they quickly showed, like, okay, we have like we have a name for ourselves. Let's let's play this and let's show why we're here. Yeah, I think they've done really good at that. Uh, number three, um, I got my team. I still think we're pretty, we're go- we're having some growing pains, mm-hmm. but I definitely feel like we've been trending upwards. I got ABB. I I think they're just right now they're kind of just hitting it all at the same time. So they're all on the same page for now. And as long as they, I mean, they have a big matchup against Espionage. I think it's a huge matchup. Yeah. They have to show up. You want to lock that first seed down because then you get to play against the four seed. And obviously, number one, I mean, the, the undefeated team. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah. not much to go in detail with there. Yeah, I definitely agree. Rat, what are your thoughts of uh, Stroh's uh, power rankings here? Do you have anything you disagree with or agree with? Uh, what, do you, what are you thinking? No, I mean, overall, it looks pretty good. I think, you know, like I said, when I was talking about my Master's Division rankings, I personally have AVB lower, but that's based off personal experience. Yeah, yeah, and your, how your team plays against them. Yeah, exactly. I think that they have picked up a lot of huge ones, which is very good for them. But Yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's also important to remember for all the teams in in the Master's Division that they, do, they did get two free wins because of the whole University of DN debacle, which is why they're not showing up on the screen, because they had to FF yeah. all their games. So that's why I, for, I'll, I'll go into my power rankings now. I definitely feel like it was much harder to stack a lot of these teams because of their two wins. So like if you, if, if you distract those, detract those two wins from a lot of teams, because a lot of those teams obviously lost to the team that was using a bunch of Masters players. But um, it's it's hard to put them in a, in a relative point because then we're looking at BPG and they only have like two wins instead of four. And I think they've actually FF'd two of their losses. So it's been up and down trend. I'll obviously start from the bottom as well. Verge, I believe, can be better. They actually this week just made a couple of roster changes. So I think they're going to be a team that might be sneaking, obviously not for like top four. I think it's pretty, they have to pretty much go undefeated now for the rest of the regular season to make top four. But I think it's something they can do if they get gel with this roster quick enough. If not, they're a team that I think that could be a serious threat in the gauntlet. I think B team is a team that will continue to improve. Um, They just obviously have gone through a couple roster changes. Now I think this is their second roster change. They did a mid and now a jungle. So both of those roles take time to integrate into a team. So I definitely think B team is a, uh, a team again, just like kind of like Verge where they can make a run in gauntlet. Um, Reaper, I put just at 10. I really wanted to put them under B team, but obviously because they went one and one with B team and they're four and four overall, I had to put them there at 10. Um, they struggled against B team in their last game. It wasn't very close, um, from the VOD that I watched. And, uh, I think Reaper is super up and down, very, very inconsistent team. So that's why I have to put them at that 10 spot. 
I put Cow- Cowboys at nine simply because of their rank against another team that I like a lot. Um, I think they can be pretty competitive. I'm really curious to see that first game against Owa will tell me a lot about how Cat Cowboys season is going to go. And if they're going to compete or if they're going to be one of those teams just kind of gatekeeping that gauntlet and uh, continuing to beat the lower ranked teams but struggling against the higher ranked teams. And then at eight, I have BPG. Um, I think BPG hasn't looked super insane this year. They've beaten, um, I think BPG has beat, has lost to Super Friends, but they beat, uh, they got an FF win. And then let's see, who do they beat? They picked up a win on us. They did beat you the first time around, but then you guys beat them the second time. I see that now. And then they beat um, Super Friends. Oh, so they've gotten actually three wins from FFs, and they've gotten one win from Espionage. So they they got when because before Super Friends came in, it was bye week who forfeited the first two weeks of the regular season. So that's why they were kicked out of the league, and we brought in Super Friends. Um, so BPG realistically, if you look at the standings, they're realistically one and four right now because they've only have one true win. So that's why they're there at eight. I would probably put them even lower after looking at that even more. But uh, I'm curious to see if they're gonna try and put up any fight as we talked about. Pretty much, I think we. All three of us pretty much agree on like the top four for Masters. I'm really going to see if BPG can push up to get into that conversation or not. Uh, seven, I have Obo. Again, I didn't have like a really f- clear picture of Obo just because they were playing with a sub jungle and it looked they looked pretty lost without him. And it was a game that they just kind of threw away super early on. I think it was the same patch that Yumi was enabled and the support main was like an enchanter main, wanted to get the Yumi, didn't get it. And they put her on Nautilus, and it didn't look super comfortable on that champ at all. So I'm curious to see what changes they make to continue to get better. I have Super Friends at 6. I really wanted to put them at 5, but I kept them at 6 because of the record. Um, but obviously, they've been uh, Dire Wolves once already. They play them again at 8.30 on Sunday. So I'm curious to see how that matchup goes. I think the winner of that is going to be the 3 seed. If not, they're gonna be the, the loser is going to be the 4 seed. Pretty much guaranteed. I have Espionage at 4. Going into the week, because I obviously, uh, Bottom Boys had a 2 a week this last week, and they have been playing pretty well, but I still favor Espionage when it comes to the end of this season. And then the top two, I'll have my team and Empire, because I do think we've played our closest games with Empire, so that's why I'm going to give them that respect and put them as the two seed overall for the entire LAS. That's just what I, uh, my opinion is of it. What do you think, Stro? Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely, there is the, I didn't, I, I, I based BPG, and the reason I have BPG a little, like, in, I think the same level as you and a little higher yeah. than other teams, is because BPG was in my division last season, and mm-hmm. most of those players are typically the same, so I, like, I think that they are uh, in this position where, I think Masters, obviously, there's just that fluctuation, but I feel like they're still pretty solid. They'll definitely be strong in the, the... I mean, yeah, they'll have one gauntlet game, I think. Yeah, exactly. The gauntlet game against the fourth place team. More than and likely. Then, and then, um, yeah, I mean, everything else, like, there is that just that close competition for the top three in Masters, which yep. I think we... I think I put Super Friends a little higher just because of... Yeah, you did. These past two weeks. Yep. But everything else, yeah, no, I definitely agree with you. And... I think obviously this week is huge because Masters at the end of this week is done and Legends can kind of create that separation yep. for everyone else. And I agree with, I mean, yeah, I agree with everything. Everything's pretty close to mine. Yeah. What do you think, Rat, going into it? Obviously, seeing now my full picture of all the teams, seeing two Legends teams before you seeing a Masters teams, what are your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I think that's, I think that's pretty fair considering I feel like your guys is, uh, your guys' division was a little more consistent, so there's, it's easier to tell that you guys are deserving to be up there. Um, one thing I would like to note about BPG Sapphire, uh, I forgot they the last game they FF'd against us, they were actually trying to play a four v five. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they were they were trying to take us on with one of their members down. So interesting, lots of confidence. Note about their confidence. Yeah, yeah, gotta love that confidence. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear though that. At least for me, like I have two legend teams and then I have four master teams before I even put another legend team because I think there's just that much of a gap between the two top legend teams than everyone else in legends. I just don't think they've been super competitive. Obviously, I think Owo was the other team that beat Empire so far this season. 
So I'm looking to see how um you guys play. Have you guys already played Owa the second time, or do you play yeah, him again? Yeah, we played it. We played him last week and gotcha. we handled him pretty easily. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, I I still think there's that gap. I think it's just right now it's the tier legends, the two legends teams, and then we have the masters four, and then we can start talking about the rest of the uh, legends teams. That's just how I feel about it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what we have for legends. Now we're gonna move into what feels like the most cut and dry of the divisions, oh, yeah. which is the Conquerors division. Obviously, top four make it to the Grand Showdown that we added this year. Um, it feels like everything's pretty much already solidified. It doesn't feel like really anyone can change that much, but we do. They do still have five games left because they are doing, excuse me, a super week this week. So, what are your thoughts going into it, Stro, of the of the Conquerors division? Uh, I mean, I feel like the top four here have like very much separated themselves. Um, it's very top four heavy. Obviously, the anguish FFs kind of count in there as well. But yeah, it's, it is definitely very top four heavy here. I I don't know like Rars like specifically, but I know for a fact like Rose is doing. I think they had just a roster change, if I yeah. remember correctly. Yeah, they just um, they just added actually Anguish's old midlander is now on uh, Rose. Yeah, so they 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 had a really good week last week. I know Mint lost a game last week, and then Moon had another two zero. So I mean, with five games left, I think the second place is kind of the big fight, in my opinion. Yep. You definitely you want to get the the second seed just for side selection or start of. Know, your BO3s, but once you get outside of the, the top four, it's it's kind of a kind of a cliff. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would definitely agree. It's interesting because Rose does play Mint this week. Actually, it's going to be our streamed game at eight o'clock, or at eight. I think it's actually at nine o'clock. The game is being streamed. Uh, Mint versus uh, Rose, which is the game that Mint actually the only loss Rose has had is against Mint. So I was curious to see how Rose will bounce back against Mint this game with an updated roster, having a new mid laner. Um, Moon was actually the team that beat Mint this last week. So it's going to be curious to see if Moon can continue to progress and show that maybe they, if Mint's able to beat Rose, that Moon also becomes that number one seed and we have like a three-way tie for first place, which would be really cool. Um, be really cool. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what's going to happen with RAR as well. They've had a lot of roster changes over the weeks, as they always do with RAR. And then for the other four teams, or other three teams now, because Anguish is out, is that are they going to put up a flight? Are they going to try and win, get some surprise wins and then see if they can get into the gauntlet um, to make that fourth spot for the showdown? Because that's always also a um, something that can happen. And, uh, yeah, I think outside of that, I think it's been pretty dominant. We've, this is actually, it's very fun. I think Conquerors is like the most fun division because they should talk the most. They are in oh, yeah. gen, they, they are in gen chat <laughs> every day and they're letting everyone know that they are good. So I love this division for that because they have a lot of confidence. Obviously this is our gold league for people who are new to the LAS. This is our gold league. The other league, the other league is our plat league. So they are allowed one plat exception player which I think almost every team has. So it's going to be really interesting the last two weeks. What if these standings will stay the same or if we're going to have a lot of mix up in that top four alone. Um, so yeah, I'm really curious to see the power level, especially of Rose versus Mint, because the first time they played, it was streamed and it was not close. Mint destroyed Rose. So I'm really curious to see if it's just that Moon has, has had a formula to beat Mint and maybe expose them or if, Rose just, or if Rose really struggles into what Mint's really good at. So, super curious. Rat, do you have any uh, thoughts on Conquerors? Obviously, it's not a team that we all play at all, you know, because they're they're in Tier 2. But I'm, I'm curious in your thoughts on these teams. Yeah, so the only team I think I've actually played here is New Origins in the preseason. That's and right, I remember. I think it was a pretty easy game, so I'm not super surprised that they're down. But yeah. uh, to me, looking at this, it just looks like there's a very clear and cut top four that are above everyone else. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I think it is going to be curious. I think the thing to look for Conquerors is kind of like we're Masters, where we I think we have an idea of where the top four are. Now it's just where everyone lands, where the dominoes fall, especially after the Super Week. Same as Legends. Who's going to create the gap? Who's going to get the 3-0 this week to put, kind of solidify themselves as that one spot? Because the one spot is very important. Obviously, for 
Masters and Legends, it auto qualifies you for Grand Tournament, but for the obviously the number one seed will auto qualify for Grand Showdown in Conquerors. So pretty important week this week for every division overall. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything we have for power rankings. I think. Oh, actually, let me go into the power rankings for tier two. I forgot we have those here. So Stro, give me your power rankings here for the uh, tier two teams. Um, yeah, so number one, I, I do have Rose. I, I think Rose, with the roster change, um, from what I've seen and heard about English's old mid laner, he's very solid. So I think with that addition, I think they're going to actually beat Mint this game, like this week, and solidify themselves as the number one. I think Moon had a very solid week, and they're just going to continue. So they say two. Mint, I don't think it's going to fall lower than three. Uh, they're they are still a very good team, and then we got Rar, then we got Deep, and then the two one and seven teams. Which, well, uh, do they have more than that now? Yeah, they're one and eight, and, uh, one, uh, one and eight. yeah. So Origins yeah. only win is against Hydra, and then Hydra's only win was against was against Anguish. Yeah, so uh, it's as much as I would love to see like these the teams at the bottom. Uh, it's more or less you're prepping for the gauntlet run. Mm -hmm. you're, you're getting ready to see what you can kind of do. But I, I just think that Rose is definitely going to finish out the season strong. Yeah, I would agree with that. I'm going to jump over to my projections now. I uh, When I did my personal power rankings on all the teams and all the players after Heat 3 going into the bye week, um, I had the number one mid laner as Brady in Tier 2. And he was on a struggling anguish team. So obviously when you're on a struggling team, it's very hard to show that prowess. He's now on a team that's eight and one. And I still think he's the best mid in tier two. So I'm really looking forward to see how dominant he can be now that he's on a team with success. That they can get that good jungles uh, mid synergy with Big Fisher. So I'm really curious. Obviously I have Moon at number two. They just beat Mint. It just makes sense. To have Moon at number two, I think it's not really a contest. Because if they're able to have clear wins against Mint, I think for actually both of their games, then they've shown that they're able to, to beat them and have a pretty good game plan into them. Raw at number four, I think they've beaten the teams they're supposed to beat below them, and they've struggled against the teams above them. That's why I have them at four. Deep below at five, again, it's just kind of like that gatekeeper where they're beating the teams below them losing to the teams above them. And then I have New Origins at six because they've beaten Hydra, whereas Hydra hasn't beaten New Origins, and then obviously Anguish is at eight because of the FFs. Um, overall, I think that's pretty you know, pretty common for Tier 2. I think it's, like we said, pretty cut and dry. I'm really uh, curious now. I want to go back up to the Masters, and can you tell me like some players that you feel like you know the strong like some of the strong players you can identify in your division yeah so i think a big reason that direwolf has a, a lot of success this season is due to their mid laner yeah uh chad x mid he he plays very well in the mid lane considering that last season i think he was their jungler if i recall correctly i think it was two uh, seasons ago he was or two seasons ago yeah yeah but it just shows he's very versatile with what he can play and i think that's a big reason they win a lot of games um, someone that stood out for me on ABB is their mid laner, Kaler, because that, that's pretty much the same reason as Chad X mid. They were playing ADC when they played us the last time. And from the games that I looked up, they looked like they are proficient in both mid and ADC, which is pretty impressive to me. Uh, um, they're, I think, Newt for Sapphire. I think that's their jungler. He was pretty much the whole reason they beat us. He was facilitating plays across the map and creating a lot of pressure on the Jarvan. Mm -hmm. And he made us feel pretty choked out the entire game, so I got to give him a nod. And if I had to put someone forward from our team, it's our mid laner who this guy can play any champion in the game pretty much. <laughs> he just, you can stick him on whatever and he, he can make it work in mid lane. And I think that's a big reason we can... We're, we're as consistent as we are. It helps mm -hmm. our drafts a lot. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I definitely think Yuki's pretty good. What do you think about for uh, Super Friends, the new team that just joined two weeks ago? Uh, Super Friends, I think their top laner was really good against us. I think he played the Mordekaiser, and uh, we were playing front to back, and he made my life a nightmare when I was playing <laughs> Aphelios. 
<laughs> that 80 carry life when you get put in Brazil against Mordekaiser. Yeah, they played they played Swain and Mordekaiser, and it was just the worst for me. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thank you for that. All right, so you tell me now, Stro, what you think of players to highlight for Legends. Uh, yeah, I'll go. I'll go from bottom to the top here. Um, I think Warriors. Um, I think Gemini is one of their kind of their X Factor players, in my opinion. He's he's a, he's been around the Alice for a while, and he's very consistent. So I think he's he's their X Factor B team. I haven't played them since their changes, um, but I would probably say. It's probably already carry. I think it's Caller of Time. Is his name? Yeah, that's his name. Um, I think he's definitely the X factor there. It's back to back eighty carries. Yeah, uh, eighty carry I, world, baby. <laughs> I hate to bring it to you, Cat Cowboys is the same thing. It's it's thirty carry. And yeah, I think he is. Mointment is. He's their X factor there. Oh well, I think it's the, this is the first team where it's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be their jungler. I think their jungler is that's their diamond exception. They play a lot around him. He does a lot of the facilitating, a lot of what you know, who gets what, and he does it really well. Um, Reaper. So I play against them a lot. They do a lot. Like Cucifer is really good, but I think Slips is kind of underrated. Mm -hmm. um, Slips is he does a lot that kind of goes unseen. So I think Slips actually takes it there. So that's their mid laner. Um, for my team, I'm gonna call out grill uh, my jungler i love him to death uh he is he's stepping into this jungle role for his second season and he is pulling out of his mind in my opinion um and then for tempest it it's probably i'd just say jungle mid both both those two are really solid the thing is you can say it for everybody on your team i feel like <laughs> there's just kind of something you have to like watch out for um but the jungle mid i know like they get like the way that they play together is really solid I think Great Power Van's kind of like under underrated in my opinion. I think he's he's definitely like by far the best mid laner uh, in this division. And obviously the Stro I think is also the best jungler in the division. So. Yeah. Stro and Stro love, you love to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think for me it's probably like pretty close to the same. I think for Verge, I'm always gonna have a soft spot for Kakalin. Um it's just someone that I know pretty personally. And I think he's very good at the game. I'm very excited to see him go back to top lane. He was playing support this entire season until now. Uh, he's a very good top laner, so I definitely think it will be good for him. I like Gemini a lot, too. He, I don't like playing against Samira, so I always have to ban that champ against him <laughs> because I just don't want to deal with it. Um, for B team, I'm going to go with uh, Jack or Not Important. I think Not Important is a pretty crucial part to their team i think finding ways to play around him is something they need to do better as a team i think like every team kind of feels like they're going into that trap where like we have to play through bot side because that's what's strong in the meta right now we're unfortunately guys we're not pro so you know we're not going to be uh all playing the correct style all the time so i think figuring what's good with your team is more important uh for cat cowboys i'm gonna go with the same i think moitman's great great person and he's a great player so i think he's very good um for OO, even though I haven't played against him, I'm going to agree with you in the jungler and divine precision. I think that in the game that he wasn't there, it was very obvious that he's needed to be there for their games when we played them. So I definitely give him the nod. I give you, the, I get the same for Reaper. I think Slips is super, good, really good for that team. I can't give a lot of love to a Jin player. I just don't like Jin, so that's why I'm not going to give it to Kusifer. I'm oh, sorry, come bud. Come on, man. Jin's great. No, can only count to four. I don't <laughs> like him, so I think he's a bait pick in a lot of games. So I, I definitely will give it a slips in uh, Reaper and then Empire. I have a lot of love for obviously Stro and for uh, Hot Asian Grill. Um, both really good players. They pop off like every week. Thank God against not uh, not against us, but against every other team. They're like popping off. And a big love also to Architect. I, I, his uh, famed clip of him trying to tire diving and dying will always be in my head. So it's, <laughs> it's I love it. And then obviously, I mean, for my team, I, I love everyone, right? I mean, we have a lot of success with how everyone plays. We don't always play a lot of different styles in, in games we do in scrims. So everyone does really well in scrims doing the different styles that we give them. Um, my underrated player would be probably be Gumi because he's an 80 carry main transitioning to playing top this season for his first season. I think he's holding his own against a lot of good top mains in this division. So I definitely got to give the nod over to him personally. Obviously, Stro and Gray know that they're great. They're really good players. So I, I know that they're going to give me shit because I'm not always talking about them. <laughs> but, you know, Gumi's done a lot this season as far as like trying to relearn an entire role. 
and it's not an easy one to learn at that. So I, I definitely would give him love for that. And then I'll go over the Conquerors, and if you guys want to pitch in on anything for Conquerors, uh, let me know. But um, going for the bottom, obviously with Anguish, we had Brady, who's now on Rose. So I'll give love to Brady and also to Decoy. Decoy couldn't make a lot of the games. A lot of people don't know this about Anguish, but obviously since I run MMG, it's easier for me to know a lot of these teams. Uh, Anguish, Decoy has a job that he works until like 9 o'clock on Sundays, which is partly why he didn't want to put a team in this year. But uh, So he couldn't play any 8.30 game. So he was getting a sub every single 8.30 game. But they looked much better in the games that he played at 9.30. So definitely have to give a nod to uh, Decoy for that, for New Origins. I do think it is... Let me pull up their team list. I have the one name. Uh, Tarin, the mid laner, is pretty good. I think he can uh, continue to improve. For Hydra, I rated actually their AD carry. Like, when I did their power rankings for tier two for all the teams and all the rank all the different um positions i had enders as the highest ranked ad carry because we actually scrimmed this team um because i i knew their former support really well so we scrimmed their team and th their ad carry was pretty good so that's why i put him as the number one ad carry in tier two um deep below is a team that i don't know a lot about but they're really nice to chat with uh, i really like worm tongue their mid laner super cool guy nice to talk to uh, Ferrar, uh, you know, it's always going to be Doki, even though he's not even on their team. Doki's a, <laughs> Doki's a fan favorite, so, you know, like, I don't know a lot, I don't know a lot, of, a lot about their team, because they're constantly changing their roster, it's just their, the raw way, so I can't give a lot of nods, so I'm just going to always give it to Doki, because he's the one I communicate the most with. Uh, and then, uh, for my MMG teams, uh, for Moon, I'm going to give it to their captain, Marion, I think he's really good on the games that he's there, super noticeable, and the games that he's not there, super noticeable. For Rose, I'm going to give it to, uh, obviously, Brady, who just joined the team. And then to Big Fisher, their plat exception player. Really good jungler. Probably the best jungler in Tier 2. I'm really curious to see how he's going to hold up against Pinkley and Mint. Because I think Pinkley and KMZ are the way Mint wins games. So it's a really big clash of how both teams want to play. So definitely looking forward to see how those games go on stream this weekend. Yeah, I mean, I can jump in a little bit. I wish I had some more knowledge. Uh, I think for Rose, it's gotta be it's gonna be Brady. Um, like he was my anguish uh, go-to player. Um, I think for Mint, uh, I played against them last season. They have a little different roster now. Uh, but KMZ and Pikle, obviously, those are they kind of played that uh, jungle mid, Cryo Moon. Um, I forgot. Who did you say it was again? I think it was their jungler, right? Uh, their AD carry, his name is Marion Cross. He's the AD for that team. Who's the jungler? I think his name is Edza. E-D-Z-A. I think I've seen him do a few good games. I mean, I'm not like a thousand percent certain now, but I want to say like he, he's done pretty solid in the games yeah. that I've, I've looked at. So I'm going to give it to him. Rar, once again, I, there's too much fluctuation. I can't really say much. Yeah. Um, deep below... Um, I was gonna give Felushka a shout out. He was he was like asked to be a part of this for last week, but I think he's he's looked really good, and I think Worm Tongue as well. I think those two have kind of, you know, been that team. Uh, for Hydra, it's definitely Ender's. I agree with you on the, the fact that he was number one eighty carry in tier two, and for New Origins, I didn't really get uh, much of a background. Yeah, but I wish I could give you more on that. Yeah, all right. Well, Rat, thank you again for coming out and being a guest for the show. Super appreciate it. We will be having different guests every week now when we do the, the show. So definitely feels nice to have you here for the uh, first week of the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Yeah, all right. So now I'm going to talk about, as a manager of the LAS, some of the things we have coming up for the end of the season. First thing that has been announced a little bit, but not like super announced, we're going to have all playoffs be streamed in the past we've had one stream where we pick the game that we want to stream um the mar no matter of division um moving forward for this year and for the rest of this year for as far as playoffs grand tournament grand showdown and for next year for the season we're going to have different streams so essentially there'll be an las regular stream las2 and then las3 for this year since we only have three divisions and each division will have their own cast or team that will be streaming them. 
So Masters will have their stream on LAS 1. LAS 2 will have Legends. Excuse me. And then LAS 3 will have Conquerors. So that's a big adjustment that we're going to be making. The point is I want everyone to have a chance to be streamed and get and for other teams as we're getting closer to Grand Tournament can get some VODs to, to watch how the other teams play. I think it's pretty important instead of just looking at a screenshot and trying to identify what to do against these teams. So for everyone, I think it's pretty good. Um, the next one will be for the Grand Tournament and the Grand Shutdown. So as I talked about before, Grand Shutdown is a new thing we made for Tier 2 specifically. Uh, it works a lot better if we have more Tier 2 teams. So we're really hoping for next season we have more than just the one division. But essentially, both Grand Showdown and Grand Tournament will now have a cash prize. The Grand Showdown will have a $125 cash prize with $75 going to the first place team, obviously decided between the, divided between the five players. And then the second place team will get $50 cash prize for Grand Tournament. Obviously, the Tier 1 team, Tier 1 big tournament at the end of the year, we're going to be doing a $250 cash prize with $150 for first place and $100 for second place. So a lot of money on the line. Um, you know, we're not, again, this is a free league. We're not asking the teams to pay anything. No one knew about this until literally today. So it's something we're going to add to try and bring some more spice to it and uh, hope we can continue to grow and see some more um, exciting tournaments because we want to add more to these tournaments and have more teams to make it longer and more exciting because the whole point of this is we want to mimic that of the LCS and how they do things and how they do in professional scene. So all of us who are never going to have a chance to get to that level can at least feel like we're at that level playing for those kind of tournaments. But yeah, those are the two things I can share right now. We'll have more bigger news later on in the season as we get towards the end of this current season of LAS, looking more towards the future of LAS season seven, but still super excited for the end of season six, see how these, these games are gonna end up and uh, how everything's gonna turn up at the end. But yeah, I think with that, that'll wrap everything up again. Rat, thank you so much for coming up. Stro, thank you as always for co-hosting with me, man. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next week. Have a good one.